Okay, so this is a, a joint project with Riley Steele, uh, who is a PhD student in, uh, at uh, Princeton University, and it's forthcoming at the Yellow Journal. And it starts with the simple question, are activists better than raiders? And the question is asked because obviously the law treats these two actors differently. The Ah, yes. Thanks. Because the law obviously treats them differently, uh, such that uh, the raiders, the hostile takeovers, are being considered as uh, the, the, the villains, and the hedge fund activists are the saints who are fixing stuff. Um, and that, of course, drives differences in the federal law and Delaware uh, uh, law as well. Um, so the, the question to compare these two is based first on the fixing bad firms, which is reducing agency costs, which is the main focus of most of the literature that is dealing with, uh, dealing with the role of uh, activists and, and, and hostile takeovers. But we add the other side of it, which is breaking good firms. Some of the firms are great firms that are simply underpriced because the market does not evaluate well the vision of the entrepreneur, or they might engage in long-term projects that the market underpriced, or simply inefficient pricing in the market. We call that mistargeting. To see the, the point we want to make, assume you have in the market three types of corporations. Uh, corporation C, let's say low-value corporation, it is mismanaged uh, and is traded uh, for $70. Uh, medium value corporation B is properly managed, properly priced, and is traded at $100. And high value corporation, corporation A, which is properly managed but mispriced, and therefore trade for $70 as well. So corporation A, which is a great corporation, and corporation C, which is a lousy corporation, they look the same in terms of their, of their pricing. Now, if you do nothing, there will be no takeovers, there will be no hedge fund activists, so we will not fix Corporation C, it will stay at 70. Corporation B, it, there is nothing to fix, it will stay at 100. But Corporation A, the high value corporation, will have some inno innovation or some great breakthrough and will trade for $500. What will happen if you have control challenge? Now, we will fix the lousy Corporation C and make it look like Corporation B and we'll trade at $100. And we also will fix uh, Corporation A and transform the corporation from being A corporation traded at 70 into a B corporation trading at $100. Uh, and if you look from the outside, it looks like an improvement, but we know that we have lost the increase in value we could have expected to get into $500. So on one hand, we have social benefits, fixing the uh, lousy corporation, but we have also social cost of all the corporations that are mistargeted and they have to shift into a business plan that is more obvious to the market in order to be priced uh, properly. Now, the difference in uh, the tactic that each side is using affects the risk that each group will have uh, mistargeting, okay? So the activists normally would buy between 5 and 10% of the shares. They will use the proxy fight, which has cost about $10 million, million, doesn't change much with the size of the corporation. And therefore they will have very low harder rate, meaning if they can improve the corporation only by 10%, it might justify a campaign over that corporation. On the other hand, raiders, they would normally buy 100% of the corporation, on average, they pay about 30% premium. Therefore, for them, if you can improve the corporation only by 10%, it's insufficient. They need a much bigger, harder rate to justify the takeover to take place. Uh, so what does it mean? It means that in terms of the risk of mistargeting, activists have much higher propensity to target because it's much cheaper for them to engage in this activity. Uh, in terms of what will happen after the campaign is completed, when the raider buys the corporation and pays uh, the full price, owns 100% of the corporation, there is no conflict anymore. So if the management is able to persuade the, the new buyer that they have some hidden value that the market didn't see, they will keep it. 
Activists, on the other hand, it's much harder to convey information for them because of securities law and because they don't want to get the information which might limit their ability to trade. And they have a strategy that they have to show to the world that they are right. They cannot simply say, oh, we targeted, then we got the information, and it turned out that the manager is great and we were wrong. We should stay with them as they are. And it's not a business model that they can promote and still get, get raised funds to their, to their uh, activities. Uh, and lastly, in terms of, uh, sorry, it's not lastly, but in terms of cost shifting, so the, the, the radar is compensating for the mistargeting risk because they pay premium, at least to get some of the value that is lost. And for the activists, the, 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 the long-term shareholder will simply bear the, the consequences of the mistargeting. In terms of screening, uh, shareholders who needs to screen the activity, when you are asked in the tender offer either to sell or not, this is a, an investment decision which most of the investors are able to make, uh, and there is no warehousing that will distort the, the, the decision. Activists, on the other hand, they ask shareholders to make a business decision. They bring a competing business plan to the business plan of the management. This is not something within the competence of, of index fund or other, uh, many other uh, shareholders. And more importantly, they bring into the show what we call wolf pack, meaning several hedge fund activists working together following the leader, such that it must be much easier to achieve the vote that, they necessar that it's necessary to win the proxy fight. Sometimes they can reach even more than 30% of the votes as a group. Uh, in terms of empirical studies, so the empirical studies about hedge fund activists fixing agency costs is inconclusive. All the studies agree that at the short term, after the announcement, there is a jump in price between six to eight percent. But what will happen after five years and more? Then it depends on the study. Some of them say that they improve. Some of the studies say that they, they destroy. Uh, and more importantly, the studies that show improvement, there are studies showing that most of the value that show that is reflected in the improvement is coming from uh, hedge funds pushing corporation to sell themselves to a raider or to a, a, a strategic buyer. It's coming from acquisition and not from improving the performance of the corporation. In terms of principal cost, the, the risk of mistargeting, so the important thing to understand about the stock market is that 80% of the shares on the market, if you hold that portfolio, you will end up with zero. Only 25%, sorry, 20, yes, 25% of the shares of the stocks are responsible for all of the return in the market for many years. So meaning that if you destroy one good corporation, it's the equivalent of improving three bad corporations. That's what it means, okay? So the value of, the, the risk of destroying a good corporation is much higher than the potential of fixing a, a, a one bad corporation. And additionally, studies show that activism basically reduces investments in R&D which is the, the source of many of the innovation that we have. Uh, so the policy implications that are coming out of this analysis is that we need to equalize the regulation of raiders and activists. And we need to do that both with Delaware law and with the federal law. With uh, uh, Delaware law, there, there is a, a case that came just very recently, the Williams case, in which the court invalidated a poison pill used they are called anti-activist poison pill. And one of the, uh, um, I would say, criticism of the judge in the case was that they adopted the poison pill before there was any specific uh, activism around. So when you adopt a pill before something happens, it's called clear, clear day poison pill, okay? So the court said there was no concrete threat, however, if you think about that, when you have a raider, then the raider, step one, would normally buy about 10%, then disclose, and step two, as make a tender offer to buy 100% of the shares. Uh, so you can always insert a poison pill after the disclosure. You have still enough time to stop it. But when you think about activists, they buy 5%, they disclose, and then the second step is not buying more share. The second step is the campaign and the proxy fight. So if you install poison pill at this stage, it's too late. It's already there. It's not going to stop anything. 
So the only way that you would be able to regulate the activity of, of activists if you would, ins would insert a, a, a clear day poison pill. Uh, in terms of the threat, so the court, the Chancery Court relied on a, a brilliant article by uh, uh, Marcel Kahan and Ed Ed Edward Rock that detailed what are the potential threats and which of them is a, 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 is a valid threat that we should consider uh, as, a va as, as a reason to adopt the poison pill. So if this is to, to fix m mistaken beliefs by shareholders, then it's not a valid threat. If this is to prevent disruption of the corporation, it's not a valid threat. If this is to avoid short-termism, then it's not a valid threat. If this is to prevent creeping control, it's a valid threat. If this is to prevent negative control and disproportionate influence, it's not a valid threat. If you want to preserve fair election, then that's a valid threat, okay? So let's, let's go over that and see what does it mean? Because based on that, the court said, uh, the reasoning was mistaken belief, it was short-termism, and that's not justified, it's not a valid threat. So first, what's short-termism? Short-termism is just one case of mistargeting, so let's switch that. Creeping control is a variant of raiders, so we all agree that you can use a poison pill so we can take it out. We agree that negative control is not a valid threat, so we can take that out as well. A fair election, which may basically means we want to prevent a bias bias vote. That's what it means. Why we want to do that? Because when there is mistargeting, the hedge fund itself never lose money. If you uh, uh, go after an A corporation and make it 70 to 100, you make money. The fact that we lost the 500 is not reflected in the performance of the hedge fund. So they don't bear the consequences of the mistargeting. So what does it mean? It means, if you think about it carefully, that the first three are in fact the outcome of bias vote. Why would you have mistaken belief? Bias vote. Why would you have disruption? Bias vote. Why would you have mistargeting, short-termism, and all of that? Bias vote. So when the court is saying you did not mention the right threat to justify the poison pill, basically what they are doing, they are faulting the board for stating the outcome and not the cause. And that's unjustified in our review. This is technicality. So we think, if you think about on, on that case, that it's very hard with the standards that have been shaped to come up with any uh, uh, reasonable threat. Think about that. In Williams, it was global pandemic, all the market crashed, global oil war, it was a company in the oil industry, stock dropped more than 50%. They had an earlier experience with activists that was disastrous. Proxy advisors support adopting the anti-activist peel in that time. Many firms adopted peels at that time, and a study shows that all those that adopted the anti-activist peels price went up. Uh, so if this is not a threat in this case, when would you be able to show a threat? That's, that's a, a very hard, hard case. In terms of the proportional response, which is the other part of the, of the, of the test, how, how long do I have? Four minutes, okay, ah, that's, that will be enough, okay? Um, so in terms of the, of the process, the, the, the proportional response, when you think about the process, then normally you have buying shares, and the buying of the shares affect the incentives, either you would make money or not, and whether your vote is gonna be successful or not. Then preparing for the proxy fight, which is communication, coordination, coalitions, and third, the voting. So in normal life of the corporation, we know that according to Blasius, if you try to dictate or frustrate the vote, this is illegal, you cannot do it. If you try to expand, if the board try to expand and move from three to two, uh, then, and, and temper with the, with the process of preparing for the proxy fight, that also will be covered by Blasius. Uh, but when you buy shares, this one is covered by Unical. This is a balancing test. Covering the buying of shares, every poison pill is, is subject to Unocal. Uh, but what should be the law when the poison pill affects stage two, which is the preparation for the proxy fight? Is it Unocal or is it Plasius? Uh, here we believe that it should be uh, Unocal for the reason that every aspect of the anti-activist pill has a trade-off between incentives and bias vote. For example, the trigger threshold. Okay, if you stop, if you allow buying a lot of shares, then the incentive is very high, 
but the, the risk of bias both is very high as well. Uh, it's the same thing with the peel term, synthetic equity, and acting in concert. All of them do the same uh, effect on the incentives to, to engage in activism and the bias vote. So given that you need to balance between these two, the appropriate test should be uh, UNICAL. Uh, so that's Delaware. For the federal law, uh, uh, we, we think that uh, the same way that it is restricted for uh, bidders to engage in warehousing, Section 14E3 should uh, include something similar to uh, uh, campaigns of hedge fund activists. Now there is a new proposal by the SEC, Regulation 13 DNG, which we think goes in the right direction by expanding the definition of group to include any member of the Wolfpack that was tipped by the, by, by the leader. Thank you so much.